Great. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Yanni. Welcome, everybody. I am the operations coordinator here at GreenBiz Group. And I want to thank you all for speaking at Virgil Lectrify this year. We are very excited to have you. Today, we will be going over basic guidelines for how to use our event platform, Hopin. Um, Hopin is a platform that we've been using for this past year for all of our virtual events, and we've really enjoyed the experience. Um, we'll be using the last 10 minutes of this session to get a chance for all of you guys to actually log into a test event on Hopin and test out the platform yourselves. So please make sure that you register for our test event um, if you haven't done so already, I believe my colleague Sarah has dropped the link to register in our Zoom chat below. We will also be sending out registration links to register for Verge Electrify. So a few reminders before we get started. Um, please make sure you register for Virgil Electrify if you haven't done so already and fill out your Hopin account. Most of you, if not all of you, should have received the communications from me um, in the past few weeks with registration links and all of that. So if you haven't, please let me know. Um, next, the Zoom call will be recorded. So all of you guys will be able to watch back on what we go over today or share it with anyone else that is speaking that isn't able to make today's session. Um, and once again, register for our test. Yeah. Hi, Yanni, this is Niru here. Um, I, I saw your email about registering and I went to register and it said sign up and I signed up and then it wouldn't take my password. And then I opted for resetting the password and it wouldn't let me reset the password either. It just sits there when I say reset. So I can also email you of all the screens I'm seeing, but it's giving me some issues registering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, please go ahead and email me if you have any technical difficulties with registering. I'm happy to help you out. So yeah, perfect. Cool. So I'm actually going to go ahead now and just go into Hopin. Please make sure that if you are um, accessing Hopin that you're using the most up-to-date version of Chrome or Firefox. Keep in mind that Safari is not compatible with the platform. And please make sure that you are on a desktop or a laptop computer. I will not work with Hopin. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna briefly stop sharing my screen and share a different one. So weird. One second. Oh, so weird. Let me just copy paste this really quick. Cool. Are you guys able to see the Virgil Electrify in the background? Yes. Great. Yep. Perfect. Thanks for bearing with me. This is my first time hosting one of these trainings. Great. So when you go ahead and register for Virgil Electrify for the test event, this is the main page that you will see over here. If I open the chat box on the right, you will see all of our chat boxes. Over here on this icon on the top right hand corner, you are able to edit your profile. One tip that we have for um, our speakers is actually putting your title and company under the last name section. We realize that that's just the best way for it to show up on screen later and I can show you what that means in a second. So you can go ahead and do that, press save. Great. Over here on the left hand side, we have a series of icons over here. You are on the main reception page. Next, we have our main stage, which will be where all the keynotes take place. Sessions, which is where we will all primarily be, as well as networking and expo. So I'm just going to go ahead and click into our test session right now. And when you first enter the test session, as you can see, you will be greeted with a tech manager. So for all of our breakout sessions, we will have tech managers um, on screen to help out moderators and to help everyone get situated with um, all of the technicals and stuff like that. So Sarah will be on screen to greet you. Once you're on the screen, you have the option of sharing your video and audio in this little blue icon. I'm gonna go ahead and click that right now and I'm on screen. Um, so typically before you do so, it will give you a window where it asks you to select the um, video and audio that you want. But for me, i am already selected it. So there's that. Um, cool. 
Over here on the chat box, we have our event chat box over here. This will be where the chat box for the entire event takes place. And then over here under the session, this is where the chat box for this specific session will be. As you can see, um, our tech manager, Sarah, um, has welcomed everyone to the chat and all of that. Um, next to that, we have our poll section. So only moderators will be able to make polls for our sessions. In order to make a poll, you're just gonna select create a poll, put a question. So I'm gonna put, how are you doing? Good. And then click create poll. <laughs> and then that'll just populate over here. Keep in mind that you won't be able to edit any polls, but you will be able to hide them from the audience or delete them all together. Um, next to that on the people tab, this people tab will show everybody's name that is in the session. And you can go ahead and select anybody, invite them to any calls, schedule a meeting with them or directly message them. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to connect with your tech manager throughout the session. If you are having any issues, um, they will be able to assist you in that way. Um, next is the Q&A. So the Q&A section is a really great way for people from the audience to ask questions throughout the session. You're able to upvote um, different questions. So that's a great feature if you say are running low on time and are looking for the most optimal um, pressing question to answer. So that's the Q&A section. Over here in the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see that two out of 15, that's how many people are on the screen at any given time. We allow a maximum of 15 participants on screen. Next to that is this little eye icon. This is the amount of attendees that are in the session at any given moment. Um, this number will fluctuate up and down throughout the session. So that'll be helpful to know. On the bottom, we have um, our video. So I can turn my video on and off like so. I can mute myself and unmute myself. Um, keep in mind that moderators are able to mute you. Um, but they are not able to unmute you. So make sure that the little red button is not on when you're trying to speak. We do ask that all speakers keep their mics on mute when they are not the ones speaking just to prevent any background noise and to just kind of clear up the video quality or the sound quality, I should say. Um, over here, we have our slide share button. Over here on slide share, I can go ahead and just hit share screen. Um, over here, I am able to share my entire screen, which we typically don't recommend. We also have our windows, so you can share your entire window. Um, this is really great if you have a PowerPoint or a Keynotes tab. And lastly, we have the option of sharing just a Chrome tab. This is great if you want to share audio or if you're trying to share any Google presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and press that right now and click share. So you can see now on this screen, I am sharing my screen. So all attendees will be able to select which section they want to be on that top. So they can do that by just clicking on it and making it by pinning it. So now I am on screen. If I want my face to be the top, I can put Sarah on screen if I want her to be on top. Keep in mind that when you are sharing slides, or sharing your screen, you won't be able to see the Hopin screen at the same time. Um, we have a few workarounds to that, and that's by either um, splitting your screen in half or using multiple monitors to do so. We have instructions on how to do that in our Speaker Resource Center, which um, I believe I've sent to all of you, but I can resend if anyone needs to see that again. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. Um, for anyone who's spoken at GreenBiz previously, you'll know that we typically have a breakout moderator slide to display. I'm happy to announce that as a moderator, you no longer have to display that slide. We have it now populated on the bottom of the screen just by scrolling down. So this is a great way for speakers to orient themselves and for attendees to know where they are, who's speaking at the session and any general information about this specific session. So that's that. 
beginning and ending the session. So it is the responsibility of the moderator to start and end every session. Hopin unfortunately doesn't have a feature that alerts you when a session is about to begin. We ask that all attendees or all speakers, I'm sorry, attend the session 15 minutes before the start of the session, which is when the calendar hold will be. Um, with a five minute warning, when attendees are able to enter the screen. So keep in mind that five minutes before the test session starts, people will start to populate on the screen or be able to see you. Um, once the session ends, please be sure to wrap the discussion and start letting attendees um, trickle into their next sessions. We recommend leaving a few minutes towards the end of your session for a QA. and a um, Technically, the sessions stay open after the end of the session. Um, you're able to stay a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, recordings for all breakouts will be made available on YouTube two weeks after the session. Right now, I'm not recording it, but typically you'll see a little icon over here that says record as well. Um, and then in order to leave a session, you're just gonna click that leave button and then press leave again, and then you're off the screen. You're also just able to click the eggs out button and just leave the window entirely. Um, let's see, one other thing I forgot to mention is calendar invites. So most of you should have received a calendar hold from me in the past week or so with a hold on your Google calendar for the dates and time of your session. One week prior to the event, I will be removing that invite and sending you a brand new one. And in that new calendar invite, I will include a link to your session directly. So on a day of, you're able to just click through your Google calendar and um, access your session that way. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen.